I'm about to head into Aldi and do all my grocery shopping for the week. I've got a huge list and about $100 to work with. I'm working on a lot of pasta salad recipes and some kid-friendly snack recipes using Whole Foods. So I'm really excited and I hope we can find some good deals. So let's get inside and see what we can find. So the first thing I want to get is some eggs. Let's get two dozen eggs for $2.97 each. All right, I need two dozen today. Let's get in a jiggle and a wiggle. Shame stuff. Next, we'll get some organic milk for $4.19 each, and it lasts until May 22nd. We'll get two of these today. There we go. Okay, let's get some blue, wait, blackberries for $0.95 cents each. That's such a good price. Ten. Let's get 10. You want 10? Yes. Okay, well, let's see how many we can get. Get my little helper. Put this one in the cart for me. Good. Thank you. $3. Okay, that's good. $5, $6. for strawberries. Let's get one of those, too. <gasps> those are beautiful. Yes, let's get them. Okay, put those in the cart. One more, because we can make some more preserves, too, huh? One more. Oh, my gosh, look how pretty you made it. Gorgeous. All right, so let's mark that off our list. Okay, $1.56 a pound for broccoli. $2. I'm going to need four cups for one recipe. This looks good. Okay, go ahead and put that one in the cart. These are $1.56 a pound. All right, you can put that in there too. Thank you, ma'am. You did a wonderful job. Next, let's get a couple of cucumbers for 65 cents each. All right, that one looks good. Cucumber. Go ahead, you can put that one in the cart. She should do. Next, we'll get some grape tomatoes for 79 cents a package. This is a 10 ounce package. We need quite a few. Right, 79 cents. Put that one in the cart because we're making a lot of pasta salad. Let's make sure they look really fresh. Let's mark that off the list. Four grape tomatoes. Let's get one celery for $1.87. Maybe this one in the back? Yeah, because no one touches one in the back. Right, <laughs> because we want to get the freshest one. Look how fresh that looks. Go ahead, yeah, you can put that in the cart. Perfect. I think we need to reorganize here. Let's start stacking some things. Next, let's get some sweet potatoes for $3.56 for a three pound bag. I'm gonna make some sweet potato fries, crispy. Next, let's get some green onions for 89 cents. I have a bunch growing in the yard, but they're a little too mature. These, ones, these young ones are better for this. Go. Next, we need some sweet onions for $1.89 for two pounds. There we go. And then we need some red onions for $1.07 a pound. Let's just get, I think maybe, well, let's get two just to be safe. I don't see bell peppers anywhere, so I'll have to get those at a different store. Okay, let's get some more of the unsalted peanuts. We're going to make some more peanut butter. $2.25 for this, and it's 16 ounces. Next, we need bread. Let's get the buttermilk bread for $2.35. I love this buttermilk bread. Next, I want to get my favorite chips. $2.25 for these ones. My favorite. These are the best chips I've ever had. And they only have three ingredients. Potatoes, vegetable oil, and salt. So, that's okay with me. Put some of those in here. My daughter wants these sour cream and onion chips, so we'll get these for $2.25 also. And I think we'll get some veggie chips for $2.79. Probably the ranch flavor. <laughs> more snack foods than we had planned. I want to see if they have more of that white wine vinegar so we can pick some of that up. If they did, it would be $2.79. Oh, there it is. Okay, let's get some more white wine vinegar. I'm going to be using this for all kinds of things this week. Next, I need two cans of olives for $1.89 each. And again, for pasta salad. I do. And then I also want to get some banana peppers. These are $2.39 for 16 ounces. And some sundry tomatoes. A little pricey at $5.45, but I really want to try these in a pasta salad. I've never done that before, so we'll see how it turns out. Let's just get one jar today. Next, we need Italian dressing for $2.39. This one is just like the Olive Garden one, so this one will work just fine. I've used it before and it tastes amazing and it's like less than half the price, $2.39 for this. I think I need to get two because I am trying out some new pasta salad recipes, so I'll get two just in case I need extra, because I'll use it. I might want to make my own balsamic glaze, so let's get one of these for $2.79. 
let's go ahead and get some pretzels for $1.89 too. $1.89 for those. I was not on the list, but that's only $1.89, so not too bad. Let's see, next we need some bacon, but which kind? Lower sodium bacon, I've never seen that. Clearly I don't use bacon that often. Let's see. Hey, that looks really good. May, okay, perfect. So $4.59 for these. One pound of bacon for $4.59, it's lower sodium. All right, next we need cheese for pasta salads. Do we want white cheddar? Do we want maybe some Parmesan Reggiano? I'm always looking for an excuse to buy this. $5.49 for that. Let's get one of these. Let's see what else we want to get. I think I'm going to add some salami to one pasta salad. So let's get one of these for $6.49. Just the regular, not the spicy. Because all the kids are going to be eating this. I never buy this, so I don't even know if this looks good or not. All right, put everything back all tidy if possible. Ah. <laughs> all right, nice and tidy. Okay, let's just get this one for $6.49. So next we need a block of cheese. Let's get Colby Jack for $3.79 and mozzarella and regular cheddar so we can have some options. So I was looking for dates. I see date syrup. I don't see dates. And I also need some mini chocolate chips for homemade granola bars. So hopefully, oh, here we go. Mini chocolate chips for $1.99. I want to get some pecan halves, though, for the date bars or date balls. They're supposed to taste like Snickers when I put peanut butter, pecans, and dates. So I want to try that. So let's do the halves for $5.59. It's 10 ounces for $5.59. Is that a good price? $55? Oh, this one's cheaper for them to be chopped. Okay, so the halves are 55.9 cents and then the chopped are 49.9 cents. So this is cheaper, $3.99, so let's just get one of these. Next, we need some Cool Whip, 99 cents each for this. We're gonna be making unicorn desserts or unicorn rainbow desserts with cream cheese, Cool Whip. So let's just get one of these, 99 cents. Next, I wanna get a few of these sea salt dark chocolate bars for $2.79. These are my favorite and I do run out of them so they do have a couple different flavors though that are good but this is my favorite so we'll get two of these. <laughs> then we'll get some of these individual whole almonds for $2.89. We just need one pack of these today. I think. Then I'll get one container of cream cheese. The price went up $1.75. Let's get two just in case because we're making that dessert. Let's make things tidy again. Pull it forward. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, two for $1.75 each. I found it, pomegranate juice, three seventy nine. dollars yes, I, I wanna drink this with the beetroot powder that we just got. I'm really excited about this. Delicious. Okay, we found the dates, five twenty nine. dollars so we wanna make those date balls. I've never worked with dates before though, so I don't know which ones look good or not. All right, let's get two packages, five twenty nine each of these. Two bags of dates. Hopefully they're tasty. And I'd love to know different ways to use them because I've never used them before. We're gonna give it a go. Okay, by request, we're getting some deli meat. The ham is on sale for $2.79, so let's go ahead and get and some that's $2. ham. All right, let's go see what the total is for all of this. So I definitely went off list a little bit and doubled up on some of the ingredients for the pasta salad just so I'll have extra. And I spent $141.75 today. So definitely a little bit more than I expected to pay, but I did find almost every single, every single thing that we needed. So let's get cooking. Lately, I've been looking for homemade recipes that satisfy the sweet tooth, but don't have so much sugar and preservatives and processed things. So I'm trying my hand this week at making some homemade granola plus homemade pecan date balls. That'll be at the end of the video. I also am making a sugar-filled dessert that's a, sort of a fun spring unicorn cheesecake type thing. And then I want to show you some strawberry vinegar too, making that with the tops from strawberries. So first let's go ahead and put together this granola that's the homemade peanut butter I made last week I only had two-thirds cup left so I just used that then I added half a cup of honey about a teaspoon of vanilla and just a little bit of sea salt and I gave that a really really good mix until it was nice and combined and smooth then I added two cups of rolled oats and a third of a cup of mini chocolate chips and I gave that a good stir and it 
it came together beautifully, but I think I could have added another half a cup or so of rolled oats because there was so much peanut butter and honey. It did make the bars very sticky. And I think adding a little bit more oats might have reduced the stickiness. I'm gonna experiment next time. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and pour that into the parchment lined eight by eight dish here. And I'm gonna push it down with another piece of parchment. First, I use my hands just to get it started. And then once it was all set, then I use the bottom of a measuring cup to really get it pushed down and pushed to the edges. It really just helps make it nice and even and really helps get it into the corners and into the sides. I'm just gonna take off the parchment and then put a lid on here. I love these little Pyrex dishes with the lids. They come in handy a ton with lots of different things that I make. And I'm just gonna put this in the freezer for about an hour after that. I'm just gonna take it out and just slice it into whatever size I want. These are pretty sweet with the amount of honey in them. So I'm just making them sort of into small little square cookies, but you could definitely make as many or as few as you want, depending on how big you want the pieces. But this turned out really, really good. Half of them were gone within a couple of days uh, and we do have a few left but definitely one of the favorite snacks that I've made homemade so far. So if you're gonna try this one, let me know what you think too, because I think they were absolutely perfect. But you can add peanuts or pecans, any kind of nuts to it too, or maybe some chia seeds, the sky's the limit, I think. Next, I wanna show you what I did with all the strawberry tops from the time that I made the preserves last week. So I saved them, put them in a mason jar, and kind of asked for some suggestions. And a lot of people recommended making strawberry vinegar, so I decided to experiment and see which vinegar works best for this. So I poured some white vinegar, just regular distilled white vinegar in one, and then the other jar, I did white wine vinegar. So you saw in the haul that I did pick some up last week and some more this week because I used so much of it with the strawberry vinegar that I ran out and I needed some to make the pasta salads too. So I experimented, left these in the pantry for two days in a cool dark place. And then after two days, I pulled them out and took out the strawberry tops. And you can see that the color is totally gone from the strawberry tops. It all went straight into the vinegar. So I found that really fascinating, but you can see that the vinegar took on this beautiful pink color. After I took the tops out, then I strained it through a wire mesh strainer. I think you could probably use a cheesecloth too if you didn't want any of those bits in there, but I think this will do just fine because I, I think we're gonna use this pretty quickly. I plan to make some strawberry vinaigrette, so stay tuned for a recipe for that specifically for a nice spinach salad or something pretty soon. And then maybe I would use it in a marinade maybe for pork or a white meat like that. I think I might try that and see how it works out. I think it would add a really nice flavor. And if you have any other suggestions for how to use the strawberry vinegar, please let me know too, because I'm looking for all the ideas. But if you have any strawberry tops, definitely give this one a try. It's totally worth it. This next recipe is the unicorn rainbow cheesecake. It's a no-bake cheesecake recipe, and I just wanted to give it a go. So first I melted a couple of tablespoons of butter in the microwave until it was completely melted, and I added about a tablespoon of sugar, although the sugar really is not necessary. I will not be adding the sugar next time because you're gonna see how much sugar is in this. Then I added some graham cracker crumbles, about three quarters of a cup to a cup or so, and I'm just gonna stir that up until it's nice and combined and cohesive and everything. It looks just like the graham cracker crust, like if you were to crumble it up. So that turned out really beautifully. And then I took eight ounces of cream cheese and softened that in the microwave. Then after that, I added two cups of powdered sugar. And first I started by mashing it with a fork because I only have one type of mixer. I only have a sort of handheld single whisk mixer and I didn't want to fly everywhere. So first I started by you know, using my fork and then using the whisker. You can see the whisker, the whisk. You can see how that went. But if you have like just your regular mixer, you can just mix it from the get-go with the whisk and just whisk it until it looks nice and fluffy and creamy. 
And essentially, we're making frosting right now. It's just cream cheese frosting that we're starting with. So we're already at a huge amount of sugar, and that's fine. It's a fun dessert. I'm going to fold in the eight ounces of whipped topping that I picked up during this haul. And you can get Cool Whip, whatever you have. This is all they had at Aldi. So I'm just going to fold it in, just being careful not to overmix here, because I am going to have to mix it up later a lot more with some food dye that I'm adding, because I am making this a rainbow cheesecake. So after that, all combined I'm going to separate the mixture into six equal portions give or take and then I picked up some food dye from my local Sprouts which is a health food market and it's called Watkins I'll see if I can link it down below in the description but it doesn't use any artificial dyes it just uses natural things like juices and fruits and things like that. So you can just look into that if you're looking for something that isn't artificial. So I thought this was cool. It was maybe $7.99 or something like that. I can't remember, but I'll try to leave a link for you. So I'm just going to be using that dye to make all the different colors. So I'm doing pastels, but you can definitely make them as bright as you want. But because it's springtime and Easter's around the corner and you know all of the pastel colors are happening right now, I'm just going to go ahead and do lighter colors. So feel free to add more dye though if you want to do that. And you can also try your hand at maybe using like beet powder or other natural food dyes with this too. You know whatever you want to give a go. And I'm happy though that I found those because I could make this a little bit less bad for us. <laughs> so anywho, I am going to be putting a little bag in a cup to help me get the filling into the bag for piping. So it's gonna look something like this, and then I can just cut off the tip later when I'm ready to pipe into the jar. And then I just repeated that process with all the other colors too. So now all my bags are ready to go, and it's gonna be time for assembly. I have these tiny little four ounce jars that I'm using for this, because it's perfect. It's a great size for this dessert because it is really sweet and decadent. I'm gonna put about a tablespoon or maybe two tablespoons of the chocolate chocolate the graham crackers <laughs> down on the bottom. However, you could use crushed Oreos for this. That was something I thought about while making this, is it'd be super easy because it would be pretty cohesive already. You could just crush the Oreos and do that instead of graham crackers. So just use what you have on hand for this. It would still be super fun either way. Then I'm just gonna pipe all the colors around and in between each layer, I'm adding a little bit more of the graham crackers, piping again, more graham crackers, piping again. I'm just making sure I'm getting the piping on the outside of the jar so you can get the really pretty rainbow effect there. And just experiment, I did this one starting with the pink and I did a few more where I started with the purple and went upwards from there. So I think you could do either way and it looks beautiful as you can see. And then on the top, I added a little bit more of the graham crackers and then put this in the fridge for at least an hour just to chill and set. And then when it's time to serve these, you can just put a little bit of whipped cream on top with some sprinkles. It's a super fun dessert, definitely one of those things that is great for a party so if you're going for a get-together definitely worth it kind of a showstopper dessert and really fun for the kids okay finally we're getting to probably my favorite recipe of the week it's the chocolate pecan date balls these are so delicious first i started by putting the pecans onto a baking sheet and just baking them at 350 for five minutes then i just set that aside while i got everything else ready i put a half a cup of pitted dates i took the pits out already added that to a food processor i only have this small little one it would probably be a good idea to have a bigger food processor for something like this then i added some of my homemade peanut butter again i did have to make another batch of peanut butter to do this but definitely you know totally worth it took me maybe what five minutes or so i mean i showed you last week with the peanut butter super fast then i just blended that till the dates were kind of broken apart then i added some cocoa powder a tiny bit of salt and some vanilla and then those pecans. And again, my food processor is definitely too small for this job. So I had to food process and then sort of stir and then process again and stir. Uh, it just did not handle it too well. But I think if you had a bigger food processor, it would work just fine. You wouldn't have to go through the trouble of mixing and things like that. Then I added some chocolate chips to this. I recommend adding the chocolate chips and letting your food processor just quickly sort of disperse them. You don't have to break them all up. You just want them to kind of be mixed in you still want some chocolate chip you know chunks and of course mini chocolate chips work best for this because they're you know little bite-sized 
balls that we're making here. But for me, since I had to mix everything, I just mixed in the chocolate chips. And you can put as many or as few as you want. And you can also add things like chia seeds or protein powder or all kinds of things to this recipe. It's very versatile. Then I just scooped out about a tablespoon at a time, added some more chocolate chips, and then just chilled them. And we're just going to eat them out of the fridge. They're absolutely delicious. Definitely give this one a go. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to see more. I've got lots of recipes. I've got more meal plans coming your way. I'll see y'all in the next video. Thanks for watching.